Don first and then student athletes. He's already asked, so he'll get the first, so. I've been on the other side with them too, so I, uh, I just didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Under four minutes away, we're scheduled to have Don Staley in here about 2.40, from 2.40 to 2.55. South Carolina student athletes will be in here from 3 to 3.15. Open locker room for the Gamecocks is scheduled from 2.55 to 3.25. That's 2.55 to 3.25. Be tough. You want to switch? I just try to be fair. I don't, yeah. Coach Staley is officially on her way, so we'll get started here in just a minute. If you haven't joined us in here, we only got a 15 minutes with her, so we'll get in as many questions as we can. Uh, as a reminder, please make sure to silence your cell phones or put it on vibrate. Obviously, no live video streaming or streaming of this press conference, along with no flash photography. Again, as a reminder, South Carolina's open locker room media availability runs from 255 to 325.
Coach? How are you? Good. Good. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here with Coach Staley. Coach, do you have an opening statement? Yes, yeah, excited to be a part of another um, Elite Eight. It's always the hardest game to play because um, it's the next, it's a step prior to, you know, being, um, going to the Final Four and we get a, we get a familiar opponent in, in Maryland who's playing extremely well, um, but also excited just to continue to, to be here in Greenville where, um, I mean, all the accommodations are, are, are great. Down here on the left. Hey, Dawn, uh, Maryland's obviously a repeat opponent, but you played them so long ago. Is there anything really accurate that you can take from that game considering that Diamond didn't play and that that's changed so much since uh, you first played them? Um, I, I do think they're playing the same way. They're just more efficient, um, and they're playing with certainty now. Like, I think we played them the second game of the season, and there's a lot of uncertainty because – they they had a, a lot of a lot of new players, new faces, and they hadn't hadn't quite figured it out, and we really hadn't quite figured our, us ourselves out either. So it's just a more lean team on both sides of the basketball. Far right. Going off of his question, what does Diamond bring to Maryland? What kind of elevates them when they they have her on the court? Uh, I mean, she she can score at 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 any time. Um, she's a willing passer. She's a leader. Like she's a she's a player that can score in bunches and impact the game on both sides of the basketball, so they have someone that um, that can do impact it. I mean, I know they missed her the last time that we played, um, so they, they'll they'll get a boost because for someone that can score as much as she scores and and uh, defend as well as she defends, uh, I wouldn't want to be without that type of player, you know. At, at, at that junction of, of the season when you're trying to figure out who you are and what your identity is. Gabrielle? Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, I was hoping you could speak a little bit about Camila and, and ceiling for her. What do you want for her career? What do you feel like she's capable of? Um, I, I want Camila to be dominant. Like, I mean, she, she can be just that. Not just an in-the-paint score. Like, I want her to be able to shoot – 15 footers. I want her to be able to, you know, shoot some threes. Not, you know, not become jump shot Judy, but, but to protect what she does best. What she does best is in the paint. She can she can make layups. So you have to balance that. And then in order for her to, to have a, I, what I think is a, a great WNBA career, she's gonna have to be able to stretch the floor a little bit. She's gonna get pushed out there. And I just want her to be comfortable. I mean, I just want her to shoot them. If she can just shoot them in games and shoot them in practice, uh, it becomes a little bit easier for her. But she's hesitant to shoot the basketball. And we're just kind of, you know, getting her to get used to doing that because she's she's pretty good when she does it. Like when we're shooting, having uh, some shooting drills, she's pretty accurate. It's just in a game, she get a little frightened in, in shooting it. So. I think once that happens, um, we will see a more dominant Camilla. Andrew? Bray Adelson, ESPN.com. I was hoping to ask you a big picture question with UConn losing last night. Just hoping for your perspective on a streak like that coming to end and what this could potentially mean for uh, women's basketball moving forward. Um, I mean, it just means a streak is over. Um, UConn is going to continue to be UConn. I mean, they, they're going to reload. I mean, if you see their roster that's coming in and who they're bringing back next year, they'll reload. I mean, it'll, it'll, they'll start a new streak. I, I, don't think, I don't think any of us that's, that's outside of UConn, we're not panicking. Um, they're going to be who they are. They're going to always you – you get a chance to beat UConn, it's always going to be a big win for you and your, and your program. So it's not, it's not over. Um, I think it's, it's probably um, – it's a scary thing because you, you think – because they lost a lot more games than they, they normally lose, but they were hampered by injuries. And once they get healthy, once they get Paige back, um, once those uh, – this year's recruiting class is able to, to play and who they'll bring in, I mean, it's, it's, it's back to the drawing board. Athletic? 
Don Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. With Kira and Raven, that feels like it could have been a contentious relationship at any point in the season, and it's not. It, they truly support one another, and there's a mentorship and a friendship there. For you, as a competitive point guard yourself, how have you sort of seen that relationship grow, and how have they pushed one another to sort of make this team even better? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it happens um, – very early in the process of recruiting Kiara. Like I was very honest with her. Like we need somebody that's gonna that's gonna help Raven. Like we need an experienced point guard that's gonna um, help Raven grow and become um, a, a a seasoned point guard. Um, that was part of part of it. Like I didn't I didn't tell Kiara she's gonna start. I didn't say Raven was gonna start. I said they were gonna have a healthy um, competition. And then from there, you can just see they both were injured or coming back from injuries in the very beginning of the season and the summer. Like, Kiara really never practiced this summer. So, I um, mean, she, she was hampered with a lot of injuries leading up to the season, and she never really got completely healthy until probably a quarter way through the season. And then they would just lean on each other. I, I do believe last time we played Maryland, Raven was the starter. Raven started the first two games of the season. And then um, um, Kiara just started, you know, getting more comfortable. Um, but through what they were going through and getting limited minutes, you know, they just they just forged a bond. Um, and it, it helped us. It helped our team um, grow quicker than, you know, quicker than normal. Like, you know, I, I, I kind of equated to um, I was um, – I was uh, the backup point guard in 1996. I got hurt early. I was probably going to be the starter um, from from how I came into camp, and I was just I was at the I was at the top of my career. I was in shape. I was healthy, and I was head and shoulders above. And that was hard. That's hard to say. Um, but then I got hurt, and then Teresa Edwards came on, and like she never she never gave it up. I couldn't get it back. I mean, I was competitive, but I was still looking like, damn, can't get it back. But so, you know, then you get, you just, you just help each other. You just find a way to have help, help, healthy, uh, a healthy competition and communication. And then you just, you know, we had knockout dragouts though. She had the first team, I had the second team, and we made our team better because of what we were bringing to the table. And that's what Raven and Kiara uh, are doing for our team. I got a question on Zoom. Go ahead, Chris. Hi, Coach. This is Chris Seidel from Hermitron Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on making it to the Elite Eight. It's an honor to talk to you. Um, talk to uh, talk about Brandon Freeze. What type of coach is Brandon Freeze? And you guys have been friends. Are you guys good friends off the court, and, or is there a good uh, mutual respect? Yeah, we we have a mutual respect for each other. We, we've seen each other on on Under Armour trips, and um, we have we have really good conversations. Then, um, just. Brenda, Brenda knows what she's doing. Brenda's been doing this for a very long time, taking teams to uh, Final Fours, winning national championships. Um, but I, I, I thought she did probably some of her best work this year in, in the type of team, the, the, who she lost to the transfer portal, and then transforming this team into um, to an Elite Eight team. I mean, one step from going to the Final Four, um, you 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 definitely have to take your hat off to someone that, you know. She only she only saw. I I would imagine she would she would be thinking you you, you gain by losing. You have to take an attitude like that when you when you've lost what you've lost in the portal. Um, and she got her team to, you know, to buy in. The quicker they buy in, the more uh, the more happy days you'll have. And as you can see, the last, you know, probably the last twenty. 25 games, they just, you know, we're, we're playing some of the best basketball in the country. These are the final five questions, starting with Pete. Coach, at full strength, as you've now been scouting Maryland for this game, do they compare to some of the SEC teams uh, in terms of their style? And, and in your opinion, generally, SEC compared to Big Ten in, in women's style, how close, how different? Um, I, I would say they're more like SEC than probably Big Ten. Um, because they are, they spread you out. Um, they don't have a back to the basket post player. Um, I mean, they they take advantage of of who they are and what the strengths are. They can they can flat out shoot the ball. They got some athletes in different different um, spaces on the floor. Um, they drive it. 
I mean, they make you pay. Um, they make the extra pass. They, they're just well connected. Um, so I think they look more, more like an, an SEC team. Beth? Really hard-hitting question for you here, Don. You're on the road for a long stretch here in tournament time. What is your travel essential? Like, how do you stay? <laughs> like, I'm like a face mask girl. So, like, what, <laughs> what's your travel essential to, to stay comfortable in the, these stretches during the tournament? Um, probably shouldn't say this because you probably shouldn't have them in the hotel. Candles. <laughs> <laughs> Candles. Huh? No, they're, they're like trophies, so I don't even use them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick up front. Well, Don, uh, following up on that question about UConn, this year we've seen number one seeds go down. Uh, in your opinion, does this help bring more excitement to the tournament? Because now, especially some people who maybe didn't tune in to the women's tournament before, they can say, hey, well, the number one seeds, they're not, gonna, they're not guaranteed to make it to the Final Four. Um, no, I mean, when you lose UConn, you lose, a, you, lose you know, part of, part of, a, um, part of a section of uh, the country that you know, enjoys watching UConn um their you know their dominance um but I, I think the game has grown like it's grown um and not not just this year and not just because UConn is no longer in the tournament it's just we are we are in demand like there are so many great um narratives so many great players so many great coaches so many great storylines that that we're, we're able to hold our own, even if UConn is not a part of, you know, and they, they'll still be a part of it. They'll still be a part of, like, it, it, once this advances, we're going we're gonna to have a UConn story. They're not here, you know, where are they? It, it, it's just going to be a part of the storyline of our, of our game, and, and, and rightfully so, because they, they've been dominant um, for decades, and – we we need to do a better job, not with just UConn, like all the teams that have been dominant. We need to talk about um, them as part of our our women's basketball history. I think that's that's part of it. Like it, this is a new history that we're you know we're venturing into um, because there are so many great p uh, players and parity in our league that we need to start documenting um, because we we probably lost a lot of our history because we. We, we chose not to, we chose not to, we probably got it documented, but we, we chose not to share it. Here on the left. Uh, Todd Golden with CNHI. Don, a big picture question. I've been talking to a lot of men's and women's coaches this year about how their athletes cope with social media, both the positive side of it and the negative sides of it. Um, for you, how have you approached that with your players, especially with the level of success that South Carolina has had and how much has it become a part of your job description to deal with that aspect of uh, of, of of coaching? Um, I mean, I probably a few years ago I was more like, hey, let's 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 sacrifice so social media for the season. And then as you continue on this space, I, I do think it has a psychological disadvantage to to ask the players to sacrifice that. It's a part of who they are. So I, I got I to gotta meet them where they are. Social media is a part of it. I think now we just have to educate what, what should be posted and let them know that they have to be super, super responsible for what they post. And, and, and quite honestly, when NIL comes around, you know, that polices it because they have a, a brand, they have a, a name, an in, image, and likeness that they, you know, that they're, they're trying to uphold because they are – you know they're the faces of some corporations, and and losing losing money be, because of what they post um, is not something that I think they want to be party to. Final question to Pete Yacobelli. Hey Don, uh, you know I was just wondering, does Aaliyah ever act like she gets any extra juice about from? Going up against a Diamond Miller, or an Angel Reese, a Cameron Brink, does she get herself even a little more pumped up for those kind of matches, or is she just steady, 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 Aaliyah? 
I, I mean, Leah doesn't let me in the, in, into that part of it if she does. I, I, I do think at, at this point um, in Aaliyah's career, she doesn't care about anything but winning. Like seriously, it's, it's, it's all about winning. She doesn't care about stats. She doesn't care about double doubles. She just, she just wants to win. I think she wants to go out um, as winners with, with her team. Like, that is it. And I think that is, uh, you know, for someone that um, is our reigning national player of the year, you, you get to a place where you did that. Now it's, you know, really, let's, let's win this thing. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right on it. Appreciate you. We'll have the student athletes in here in just a minute. Again, go ahead and get in line. I mean, you can see there's a bunch of questions. So we uh, get in line, and we'll get to your questions as quick as possible. You going to go ahead and get in line? Good. Number one. Yeah, you're one. How are you all day? Also, as a reminder, before we get started with the student athletes, open locker room for the Gamecocks runs from 2:55 to 3:25. So just open a minute ago, and it'll run till 3:25 p.m. We're going to go ahead and open it up for questions here, starting with Gamecock Scoop on the right. Alan Cole, Gamecock Scoop out uh, for Bree and Aaliyah. Don was in here a second ago saying the Elite Eight game is the hardest game of a tournament. It's that last step before the Final Four. You've been in two of them now. Do you think that's true? Is the Elite, is the Elite Eight the hardest game of a tournament run? I mean, there's just a lot of intensity around it because you know that the next step is the Final Four. So, I mean, I would, I guess I would agree um, just off the hype that comes with it. But honestly, we just look at it as another time to step on the floor and compete. Pete? Oh, Aaliyah, is, how different is Marilyn with Diamond in the lineup? You didn't see her the last couple of years when you played them. And do you get... Any extra buzz from a game like this where you're going up against another All-American, you know, like you did against Angel, like you may have done against Cameron Brink earlier on in the season? Yeah, I mean, Diamond helps them a lot. I mean, she likes to get out in transition. She's long um, and strong and can play a lot of different positions that they need her to. So she really just opens up the floor a lot more. And not really. I kind of just take it as another game, um, just opposing five players that we have to compete against. Questions? Beth? I was wondering from each of you guys, um, some hard-hitting journalism here. What do you bring on the road to like make it more comfortable? Because you guys are on hopefully a long stretch here of a couple of weeks in hotel rooms. Start on the right and come all the way back. Uh, uh, I bring books to read for fun. I have two right now that I'm reading, and that's about it. And a blanket if we're uh, flying or driving. Fiction. Uh, fiction, true crime, mysteries. Crime, murder, stuff like that. <laughs> Crime, murder. <laughs> uh, me, I have a book, thanks to her, that I read. But other than that, I just have probably some shows downloaded, but I'm big on YouTube, just learning some new things off YouTube. That's about it. I bring my iPad, and everything's just on there. I'm a Netflix girl. Or just, you know, FaceTime. So, yeah. <laughs> As a reminder, she still needs your recommendations for Netflix. Yes, Questions? please. 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 Right here in the middle. Hey, y'all. Kareem Copeland, uh, Washington Post. I'm just curious. You know, we talk a lot about matchups at this time of the year. What's the challenge, in, and this is for anybody, um, what's the challenge in playing a team that, you know, basically runs five perimeter players as opposed to having somebody in the post? Um, definitely good for us. We have, you know, you know, the starting five, and then we have bench players who can also get out and run, get out and defend, play perimeter defense. So, uh, you know, when we play those teams that play five out a lot of the time, I mean, it's definitely difficult, but we have the players that are able to do it. Here on the far right. Yeah, Mitchell Northern Baltimore Banner. Is there any team for any of y'all in the SEC that reminds you of Maryland style, you know, kind of that five out likes to get up and down? Ooh. That's a good question. Well, I feel like, you know, playing in the SEC, you kind of get that, you know, every kind of, points of every aspect 
throughout different teams, I would say. I mean, there's really no one team, but I think the SEC is so athletic and so, you know, talented. You kind of get a piece of that, you know, no matter what game you play. That's a great answer. <laughs> it's a great answer. <laughs> Pete? Kira, it more so when you have a schedule like this where you face Maryland early in the season, Stanford, a lot of big teams, how does that prepare you for this moment right here? I think it prepares us a, uh, prepares us a lot. You know, uh, we had a pretty tough uh, non-conference schedule, and our SEC conference schedule was tough as well. So just being in the tournament now, I think it's definitely prepared us, and we're prepared for any team that we have to face moving forward. You're on the right. Uh, Kira, that Maryland game, I think other than the injury, was the last time you didn't start. You've obviously come a long way since then. I guess what's kind of the biggest thing you've seen from yourself kind of looking full circle from that first Maryland game to now? I think I've come definitely a long way just being more comfortable in the role that I'm in. Um, the team kind of joked around a lot. I just looked totally different from that game to what I do now. And I feel like uh, I've gelled with this team very well um, at this point. So super excited. Back there. Okay, you both laughed when she said that. Just, I knew that was coming. I, <laughs> I mean, I come on. Like, I'm sorry, but well, what, what is it? What is no, about I'm that? literally not into it. <laughs> Am I loud? Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, in the beginning, uh, I, well, <laughs> I just feel like her hair grew a lot. So I just said she looked kind of like a little freshman um, when we were watching film um, on Maryland. So, yeah, that's why I laughed. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. I feel like her, especially like her confidence and stuff too as well. Like we got to learn her just like she got to learn us. So she definitely came a long way and we came a long way with that. And I think she just does a great job running our team. Um, since the beginning of the season to now, I mean, I just think that her growth, just like Bree said, the confidence and just her ability to run our team has just been spectacular. Diana's really good at her job, by the way. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Sorry. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, maybe I don't I you got about 50 Maryland will be in here starting at 350 to 405 and the Maryland student athletes will be in here from 410 to 425 as a reminder the South Carolina open locker room media availability will run till 325 uh, and then Maryland's open locker room media availability is from 405 to 435 our regional final tonight is at 7 p.m. between number nine Miami against number three LSU
But it's the ones that like come in like you know like later, and I'm like, I'm not. You weren't here. Right. <laughs> so I'll just change her out. Este.
As a reminder, we're about 15 minutes away from the Maryland head coach joining us on stage at 350. Coach Reeves will be here from 350 to 405, and then from 410 to 425 will be the Maryland student athletes. In addition, Maryland's locker room will be open from 405 to 435. That's 405 to 435.
Just a reminder, we're about a couple minutes away from Coach Freeze joining us. If you want to head to the press conference area, Marilyn will be with us from 350 to 405 will be Coach Freeze. 410 to 425 will be the Maryland student athletes. The Maryland open locker room media availability will run from 405 to 435. Yeah, that'll help with the uh, with making sure the press conference goes well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All the, they all come up here like with their phones and. As a reminder, please make sure to silence or put your cell phones on vibrate. No flash photography and obviously no live video streaming of today's press conference. How are you? Good. Right beside me today because of the, I said right beside me today. Let you get settled and we'll get started. Yeah. All right, coach, if you could give an open statement, please, and then we'll leave it open for questions. You know, we're really proud to be here in the Elite Eight, especially, I think, because no one expected uh, that we were going to be here. Really, really excited about the matchup with South Carolina. I think, obviously, their record being undefeated speaks for itself. And I know we played them in the second game of the season uh, without Diamond. Uh, I'm not even sure at that point of the season whether we would have had Diamond. It would have made a difference in that game. Uh, we were so far away from being a cohesive unit that I'm sure South Carolina at that point probably wondered how we even got here. Um, but y you see with South Carolina, um, I, I saw a stat the other day, their starters uh, have started 130 games together. And when you look at our starters, it's been about 34. <laughs> so you see South Carolina, their, their roster is loaded, extremely impressive. I, I think how Dawn has been able to manage their minutes and, and keep everyone happy has truly been impressive to be able to see you, but uh, I'm really happy for our group that they've trusted the process and they just continue to keep putting their head down and working and continue to keep telling uh, just a, a, a very sweet story. Can I open it up for questions? Pete? Hey, Brenda, Pete Yacobelli with the AP. Um, you and Dawn, I guess, have developed a nice little series uh, here. I'm guessing that you think playing those kind of games early on helps you get to right here where you are right now. Is that what you get out of it? And is the series going to continue? Yeah, I mean, we have always loved playing the series. And you want it to be the best, you got to continue to keep playing the best. And I think they, they bring the best out of you. We've had games where we've gone down there and, and won and vice versa, back and forth. And for us to play them the second game of the season with such a new roster, it just allowed our, our kids to, to really gain uh, some really valuable experience. So, yeah, we want to continue to keep playing great teams. I, I think it prepares you for, for these times. 
right here in the middle, Gabrielle. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, Coach, you've seen a lot of great teams throughout your, your tenure. Where does this South Carolina team match up uh, across kind of all of the ones you've ever seen? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen the size <laughs> that they have. Obviously, to be undefeated and to, to, you know, to, to look at the depth and the size that they have, you bring the players off the bench and they just even get better is pretty impressive to, to be able to see. So it's got to rank up there as uh, one of the best when, when you talk about all the size being on their roster. Far right. Hey, Brenda, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Just about to ask about that size. You know, you guys have been going against teams with, you know, bigger post players all year long and, and you guys have figured out a way to, um, you know, offset that. But their size is a little bit unique. Um, how has what you guys have done up to this point kind of prepared you for that? And, and how is their size different than, I guess, some of the other teams that you face that have brought in big lineups? Well, yeah, I mean, they're sometimes playing three post players out there. So uh, ton of ton of size. I think for us, we have to continue to keep being us and, and continue to play the style that, that we want to play. And, you know, again, you know, I think we've had so many great battles between, you know, being able to play South Carolina. It's not a, a first time you, you play them uh, here in the Elite Eight, as well as, you know, the schedule. You know, we've, we've gotten to play at Baylor and, and Notre Dame at, in UConn at home. So we've gotten to really, you know, we just came off of playing great size with, with Notre Dame. So I don't think for us that I, I think if it was the first time you were seeing it, it, it would impact you more. Athletic. Hey, Brenda, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. You kind of touched on this with their depth, but I'm just curious, in game, how much of a chess match is it when you sort of look at that bench and there's like five players there that could maybe start elsewhere and she can kind of <laughs> pick and choose who to take at any moment? Yeah, it's, like I said, remarkable that you, you have so many players that are willing to, to sacrifice the, those minutes and, and come off the bench. And it is, a, you know, that... I think, as you see in this tournament, we, we don't have that kind of depth, although we have been able to extend our bench, which has made it nice. But this time of the year, you're you know play, playing with the, the, the kids that can make plays for you. Pete? Brenda, it's almost like you guys are in the SEC with as many times as you've seen Boston. What makes her such an elite player? So many things, her scoring, rebounding, shot blocking, her defense, and she's really physical. I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, being able to, you can't move her down the block uh, when, when you're trying to defend her. She's got great hands, and so a really, really difficult matchup. I have a question on Zoom. Nathan, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Freeze. Uh, Nathan Snell with MarylandSportsBlog.com. Uh, I wanted to kind of switch it up. So Lavender Briggs was on this team last year but didn't play and this year to see her work back from an injury and be a part of a, a good team uh, just what are some of your, your perspective on what she has been able to accomplish this year for the team Lavender's been been huge and I have really enjoyed our staff's enjoyed just the growth to to watch Lav and it hasn't been easy coming off an injury like like you mentioned and it was she was slow to 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 kind of you know, uh, get comfortable w within our system. But what I love about Lav is she's trusted the process. She's just continued to keep putting her head down and working. She loves to loves the game, loves to, to get better, and is a huge X factor for us. I thought just her second half, uh, it, I mean, really against Notre Dame, I mean, she gives us so much from a defense, rebounding, scoring that uh, is huge for us. Another question for Zoom. Chris, go ahead. Congressman Radio and Palmer, congratulations on winning yesterday. Do you feel a lot of pressure representing the state of Maryland? Because I know you had Coach, you know, I know you had Governor Moore there in the first game of the, uh, the, uh, the tournament. Do you feel a little pressure that you're representing the whole state of Maryland and hopefully this could move into something great? A pressure is a privilege. Uh, no pressure. I, I love the fact that we get to represent Maryland. I think that's the, the coolest part of this journey is we get to continue – to share our story, uh, to rep Maryland on our chest and our university, and 
it's uh, just we take it as a, a compliment, the fact that uh, we are kind of, you know, um, waving the flag and, and carrying it for, for everybody out there. Shanta? Brenda, uh, we've talked about sophomore Shy this year and kind of how she brought her defensive game up. But ESPN had this crazy stat yesterday about like she didn't give up any points and the number of turnovers that she forced on Notre Dame players. I'm just curious, is this like sophomore plus Shy? <laughs> Was that stat right? No, I'm just, <laughs> no, I, I saw that and I loved it. Uh, I loved it, and and it is. Shy was, it was has always been our lockdown defender. She took that last year, and then she added the scoring piece uh, this year, and it gives me chills of, of what her ceiling is going to be. Sophomore Shy plus, I, I'll take it, but. She thrives in these moments. She's really, really competitive, and, and she loves to win. And I love seeing that she's taken her game to another level. Here on the left with ESPN. Yeah, Amy Vopel. Coach Freeze, um, two questions sort of related. Uh, UConn streak, Final Four streak ended last night. Just if you can put that into perspective um, for the women's game. And also, obviously, it was a Big Ten team that took them out. And having three Big Ten teams in the Elite Eight, we've thought the conference was great all year, but that's been, been proven the case in the tournament. Just your thoughts on that. Too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's incredible what, what UConn has been able to do and, and the standard of excellence. And it is really, really hard to do to be that consistent for so long. I think you're also seeing in the men's game as well as now the women's game, which is about 25 years behind the men, parity and and uh, the portal and COVID and just the the game has has evolved. So uh, I think it's awesome that you can't predict what's going to happen in the future. And for the Big Ten, we've lived this all season long. It's awesome to see it unfold right now on on. Uh, the national stage because we felt like as a conference that this, you know, these teams were, were elite all year. And so to be able to kind of see it unfold and play out right now is uh, what we faced all season. So really, really happy for the Big Ten, but I know we're nowhere clear, close to being done. Gabriel? Coach, you said folks probably didn't expect you to get here. Um, knowing that, that, that the expectations were not to be here and being the underdog against the number one South Carolina team, you know, how does that feel your team? I think it's just the normal that we've had all season. We were picked preseason 18th in the country, and when you watch everything that's out there, uh, nobody believes that we'll advance out of, out of this game. So, you know, for us, it's uh, we're used to it. It started back in the preseason, and rightly so. There, there were a lot of question marks, but I think uh, I love the fact that this team – never bought into it and, and believed anything. They decided to kind of set their own path and their own course. Down here on the far right. Corinne Copeland, Washington Post. I, I want to ask about Bree. You know, she continues to kind of get minutes and bring that energy off the bench. And you talked about, you know, being able to kind of extend that bench a little bit. How does she continue to earn your trust? And, and you know, how much does it help to as she kind of comes in and is able to kind of get gritty on defense and, and bring that energy. It's huge. Bree's no longer a freshman in my eyes, and she's gained our trust all season. You have that ability as a player through your practices and, and your games, and Bree is built for these moments. You saw yesterday she's fearless, she's confident, and she's physical. She's, she's built for, for March when they're allowing this kind of physicality w within the game uh, that, you know, she, she thrives in it. And it allows us, I, I think, even for your upperclassmen to, to see a freshman that, that's so confident. Uh, it gives them energy, uh, you know, the same way that, as they, they see what Bree is giving us. Start of the final three questions in the back. Ed Lee with the Baltimore Sun. Brenda, going back to Cheyenne. Um, you've used her often as a backup point guard. What strengths does she bring to that position, and is that something you can envision going forward with her? Yeah, we're so we're really fortunate. I mean, we can get her scoring from the off guard position as well as from that point guard position. She's got great length, and uh, she's just doing a phenomenal job of navigating at that that point guard position when to score and and when to to make plays for others. And she's so versatile with her ability to, to score, but also to, to create for others, 
that, uh, especially with her size and her length, that it gives us a lot of great options to be able to move her around. Right here in the middle. Coming from your other side. Uh, Jerry Longman of the New York Times. So Brenda, these men's and women's tournaments have shown that nobody is invulnerable, nobody's unbeatable. So where do you see your advantages could be tomorrow, and what do you see the, the keys to, to the game? Well, I, I think both teams are going to try to play their styles of play, and, and they're going to you know want to use their size and pound it inside and, and go rebound, and we're going to want to use our speed, and we want to you know get up and down. So... Um, you know, anything can happen like you talked about in, in March. I mean, we, we've got to make shots and we've got to be able to get stops and, and keep them off the glass. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're saying the same thing. Final question will come from Zoom. Andrew, go ahead. Yep. Hey, Brenda, Andrew Chodas, Testudo Times. I kind of wanted to ask, it was just a few weeks ago where you guys were in a neutral, uh, in a neutral site against Iowa. And that was basically a home game for them, like almost 12,000 fans. A really similar scenario here in South Carolina, you know, with, you know, just an hour from, from Columbia. How does that prepare you guys, you know, to be, to be in such a hostile environment in a neutral site game? Well, I, I think your schedule and your season prepares you for that. And you just made mention to it. We've been in so many of these that we don't even blink anymore. And, uh, you know, when you look at we've played at Notre Dame, we've been at Baylor, we've been at Iowa, Indiana, the Big Ten tournament as well prepared us for this moment now. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, we will have the Maryland student athletes up here with us in just a few minutes, approximately 410 to 425. In addition, the Maryland locker room is open from 405 to 435 p.m. Good job. Appreciate it. As I said, just in case, as a reminder, the locker room just opened up for Maryland and will run till 4.35.
The Maryland student athletes are officially on their way. If you're not in the press conference area already, they'll be on their way already, and uh, we'll get started here shortly. As a reminder, no flash photography, no live video streaming. Obviously, please silence your cell phones or put them on vibrate as well. Student athletes are making their way on stage and we'll get started here shortly. Make sure when you ask questions to state your name and affiliation and raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're going to let them get settled, and then we'll get started. Um, we're going to have a question on Zoom, and then we'll open it up for questions in the area. Go ahead, Nathan. Good afternoon, ladies. My name is Nathan Snell from MarylandSportsBlock.com. Uh, this question is for Shy, Diamond, and Faith. Uh, last year, uh, Lavender was on the team but didn't play. And uh, this year, uh, work her way back from injury into what well, she's been able to provide for the team, uh, work her, way, her confidence back through injury, and what she's been doing this turning run, uh, just what have you seen from her? And uh, what is it like to be, be a teammate? I mean, I could talk on it first. I've known Lab, I knew a Lavender a little bit before she had come to Maryland. So I knew what she could do on the court. Um, it's just very unfortunate that the injuries that she had throughout college, but having her come to Maryland was really excited. Um, she's an awesome person, awesome basketball player. So it's just really nice to see when people come off injuries and do so well. I mean, seeing Diamond as well, coming back from injury, like it's just awesome and you, you just want to- yourself. Myself too, yeah. coming back from injury. <laughs> it's just cool to be able to support people uh, who are doing so well after injuries. Um, yeah, just to piggyback, I know in the beginning of the season, Lav was dealing with a lot of confidence issues. So just to see her bounce back from all that and now she's thriving. And I'm just really excited for her. I mean, we're friends on and off the court, so yeah, she's doing good, and I can't wait f to see what else she does. And to piggyback off the piggyback, um, <laughs> I'm just happy for Lav. Um, she um, came to play at the right time. I mean, yeah. I'd rather have her have that little moment in the beginning of the season than now. So um, I think she's bringing um, a big piece for us off the bench. Far right. <clears throat> hey, y'all, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Uh, this is for you, Faith. Um, since I'm going to ask about the defense, you guys have been figuring out how to offset bigger teams all season long. What's been the key to that? And is South Carolina's size a little bit unique compared to some others? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we all know South Carolina. They're huge. Um, I think Notre Dame prepared us a little bit with that height. And I think the number one thing that, you know, it takes to play big players, big posts, and we're not that big is really just heart hustle and working hard. That's, it makes up for your height, makes up for that disadvantage, but you know, we'll find it somewhere else. Gabrielle. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, you know, I think a lot of people didn't expect this Maryland team to make an elite eight. Um, you know, you're underdogs against South Carolina, basically everyone is. Um, how's that feel and, and how's that fuel y'all for a game tomorrow for any of you? Happy? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think that since since day one, we've kind of been writing our writing our story. We've been the underdogs um, in any big top ten matchup, and uh, we prove people people wrong by by beating our, our great the great teams by not just you know ten but double digits, twenty point. Well, it is ten double digits, but um, <laughs> in any case, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, but in any case, you know, I think. 
we're just gonna stick to stick to us, stick to our our support system, to the people that have believed in us since day one, and we're gonna use that as you know um, energy uh, for for tomorrow. Pete. Pete Iacobelli with the Associated Press. Diamond, you missed uh, the last couple of games with South Carolina because of injuries. <laughs> How excited last are you two. to go up against them tomorrow? And what's it like to play Aaliyah Boston? I know you guys were both in there as freshmen when you played. Um, yeah, unfortunately with injury, I've been, I missed the last two times playing South Carolina. So it's just exciting. And I, for some reason, God was like, you're going to play this game. So I'm, I'm, I'm truly grateful that God has given me the opportunity to play the sport that I love at the highest level on one of the top stages in this year. So it's going to be fun. And, you know, Aliyah is a great player. They have a lot of great players. And our class 2019 is really thriving right now. So it's going to be fun. Right here in the middle. Jeremiah Holloway with the state. Uh, this one's for Abby specifically. Uh, when you guys first played South Carolina this year, it was a early season matchup, uh, second game of the season. From that point forward, how do you feel that this team has, I guess, kind of, you know, Joe kind of clicked a little bit uh, heading into tomorrow? Yeah, I think with, with every practice and every week uh, this season, we've gotten better, we've gotten closer, we've kind of learned how to, as you said, gel um, on not only the offensive end, but the defensive end. And I think for us, we've just been just progressively, um, you know, just learning each other's strengths and weaknesses. And what's most important is that we've developed a very strong trust. And I think for tomorrow, we all know that we're going to give each other our 100% um, for this team. And yeah, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And you know, the first game, it was it was a really, really tough game. Um, but it was close until the end of the third quarter, and I think that we, we didn't have diamond. We, we did have some, like, intangibles that we could have controlled better, and I think we're, we're going to be prepared for this game tomorrow. Back to Pete. For, for Cheyenne, was about that first game, was it a little bit of a wake-up call for you guys uh, when, after South Carolina came in there and beat you like that on your home court? I don't know if it was a wake-up call. Um... I think we knew it was going to be a tough game just knowing like what was going on at that time. Diamond was out. We had nine new players. Second yeah, second game of the season. So I think that was a little bit of a tough one. Um, I think now we have gelled a lot better and we have became more cohesive. And um, so I think we're going to give them uh, hopefully a run for their money. Questions? Back here on the right. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. E, this is for you. Um, just curious what this whole run has been, this postseason run has been like for you, and, and did your parents get to watch the last game because it was early enough for them? <laughs> it has been amazing. I've never been like Sweet 16 Elite A, so just being here is, I'm grateful. And yeah, my parents watched it. Thankfully, it was at 11.30 a.m., so they're six hours ahead, so that will be 5.30 p.m. But they're going to watch Monday night, too, even if it's 1 a.m. They don't care. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what time we play. I know they're going to be in front of the TV. Oh, this is Aww. cute. That is very cute. What about the text me, brother? Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you all. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Four thirty-five will be the opening of the Maryland locker room until the, it ends. It runs from four oh five to four thirty-five, so you got about four nineteen to four thirty-five available as well. That does it for today's pre Elite Eight press conferences. We'll obviously have a regional final tonight at seven o'clock, number nine Miami against number three LSU.